around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Figured a pound of them horses loose. Well, they're dry, Milk. Don't get them a wash. You'll be needing to move lively. Yeah. Hey, Milk, you, you sure about this job? What's the matter? You scared? Hey, you know better than to ask me that. Just holding up a bank right in the middle of the day. I yes? told you, Loot, I know Dodge City. It's asleep on its feet when the sun gets high. Folks don't even rouse enough to swat flies. Come on, boss. Well, it's your game. So don't you worry. All we do is hang around like we was just trying to stay out of the sun till we wander into the bank about three o'clock. There won't be no trouble. You must be awful sure about the law there. We'll be out of town before that big marshal can wake up and get there. Well, I hope... Sit noise. Something in the bush down there. It's some animal, Lou. You got nerves like a woman. I'm going to look. Hey, you, you, you there. Don't you move. No. All right. Who you got, Lou? Somebody sneaking through the brush. What are you doing here, mister? Well, I, I, I just been fishing, is all. It's Chester. Oh. Oh, Milt. You been there long? Oh, uh, dang, I don't really know. I fell asleep. A body gets mighty drowsy fishing in the sun. Look to me, you've got mighty big ears. You hear us talking, Chester? I told you I've been to sleep. He's lying, Milt. He couldn't help hearing. He's been right under our feet the whole time. Mm-hmm. Lute put down the gun. Well, we let him go. We ain't got us a Chinaman's chance to get him. We kill him, the whole of Ford County will be out looking for him. He works for Marshal Dillon, Lou. Oh. Well. Well, then, tie him up. Leave him here. Somebody find him sometime, maybe. Lou, it's the same thing. If he don't get back, the Marshal will start looking. He might start looking just the wrong time. You can just bet he'll start looking. I'm supposed to be back there at the office at noon, and Mr. Dillon ain't want to just sit around well, and wait. Well, I still say our best bet is just to kill him. Now, wait a minute. And then maybe we can use him. You're a pretty good friend of the marshal, ain't you? Mr. Dillon's my best friend, and I'm proud of it. Why? You see a lot of the folks he sees, don't you? Like the like the doc, for instance. That woman, uh, the one at the Long Branch. Well, I see Doc and Miss Kitty, of course I do. What are you getting at, anyway? Well, it just seems to me like maybe you wouldn't want to see nothing happen to him. To any fault of yours, that is. Uh, just a minute here. I... You wouldn't want somebody to take a shot at one of them while they was walking down the street, would you? Why, no. Mm -hmm. Of course, I wouldn't want to do it if I didn't have to. But you're the one who's going to make me decide if I have to. Now, you listen, Milt. I ain't going to have nothing to do with shooting Doc or Miss Kitty. Then you better do what I say. Well, what you I'm better to... see that the marshal's out of town this afternoon at 3 o'clock. A good long way out of town. Why, well, I can't do that. You'll do it. You'll do it, or you'll have one or two dead friends. And I don't ever talk idle. Not about shooting, he don't. So it wouldn't be healthy for the marshal's friends if you was to tell them what you heard out here, you understand? Yes, sir. Reckon I do. All right. Go on now. Get your horse and head back to town. And you and the marshal had better be a long way off at 3 o'clock. 
You ain't no good, Bill Toll. You ain't no good at all. Then just you remember that. Now get. Think he'll really do it? Get the marshal out? Sure he will. He's too scared. Anyway, he hadn't got enough sense not to. Oh, a heap of things in this world could make trouble. But them meanest and orneriest of them all, to my way of thinking, is cancer. Now, that's why the U.S. Post Office put out a special stamp for the crusade against cancer. I've got it here. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. Yes, here. Now, this 1965 five-center reminds us that getting an early medical checkup can help bring cancer under control. Every year, some two million people in the world die from it. Hmm. Kids as well as older folks. And every year, about two million good men and women here in the United States get together to raise money to help the American Cancer Society find ways to fight it. Oh, that society's doing a great job. But it's, it's almost all volunteers. It pays for public health education professional education and training, patient and community services, and and most of all, for research. Yeah. Finding the things like viruses that cause it. And remembering what the stamp says, early diagnosis saves lives. <laughs> Sam, I gotta find Miss Kitty quick. Well, she's right over there, Chester, over at that table. Oh, um, thank you. Uh, Miss Kitty? Oh, sit down, Chester. Uh, uh, thank you. Something wrong, Chester? You look upset. Well, whatever would give you an idea like that? Well, I can't imagine. Except that you come in snorting and all red in the face. I don't know why I should think anything was the matter. Well, I, I sure am glad you don't think so, Miss Kitty. <laughs> all right, Chester. What's on your mind? Well, I, I just got me a wonderful idea, that's all. And what's that? Well, see, I, I was thinking this would be a fine day for you and Mr. Dillon to take a ride out in the country. In the middle of summer? Well, yes, but it's real pretty out there, Miss Kitty. All them lilacs around. Oh, Chester, there hasn't been a spray of lilac out there since spring. Not for a couple of months. Oh. Well, I bet the castor beans is blooming. They're a mighty pretty sight in castor beans. Oh, not to me, they aren't. They're about as poor an excuse for a flower that I can think of. Well, Miss Kitty, what... Look, getting sunstroke isn't going to do me any good, Chester. Well, but now sunstroke ain't... I'm not going out in that sun this afternoon with Matt or anyone else. And you might as well stop talking about it. Oh, here comes Doc. You ask him. Uh, oh, hello, Kitty. Just hello, a... Doc. Hello, Doc. Uh, well, what are you two doing to pass the time of day? Why, Chester's trying to talk me into going out riding with Matt this afternoon. Oh, wow, well, right. A pretty hot day for trips around the country, Chester. I just thought it might maybe do him some good to get away from town for a little oh, bit. you were just acting silly about it, Chester. Well, maybe I got a good reason for it. There's no good reason for sending folks out into the prairie sun. Yes, well, if you was as smart as you think you are, you'd go along, too. Oh, for heaven's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> Don't worry, Kitty. I'll take Chester off your hands. <laughs> come on, Chester. Come on. Let's have a bite of food. It's getting toward noon. Yeah, maybe you'll feel better after you have something to eat, Chester. Miss Kitty, food ain't got <laughs> Come to... on, Chester. <laughs> Goodbye, Kitty. Goodbye, Doc. Some other time, Chester. Another time ain't the same thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I sure did try. Yes, you did. It seems to me you tried too hard. Doc, I thought you folks were supposed to be my friends. You ain't got no call to act so smart alecky and stubborn. You know, it you? sounds like you've got a touch of the sun yourself. Uh, where have you been this morning, anyway? Fishing. Fishing? 
I always thought that was supposed to calm a man down. What happened to you? Nothing. Hey, Doc. Doc, have you got somebody real sick out in the country? You, you driving out there this afternoon, maybe? Well, not that I know. Well, now, but it could happen. It seems some of the biggest belly aches come on the hottest days. Sure, they do not. Now, I expect that can be mighty worrying, can't it? Well, now what do you mean? All that driving by yourself. It, it seems a body should have some company. Oh, Chester, if you think I'm going to go back there and try to get Miss Kitty to go driving with me this oh, afternoon, no, you're... Oh, my, no, Doc. No, you told me yourself it wouldn't be good for Miss Kitty. I ain't thinking about a thing like that. All right, then. I but... was thinking it might do Mr. Dillon some good to get off with you this afternoon. Oh, now, Chester, Well, he might could even help you, like... Lifting a sick person up or holding him down. Oh, Chester, or... you stop this nonsense right now. <clears throat> Just what is it that you've got on your mind? Nothing. You've got some reason for wanting Matt out of town. Now, is that it? No, Doc, no, it ain't nothing like that. <laughs> All right. Let's hear no more about it. Well, come on in here. Come on, let's get some food. Yeah, no, no, I ain't got no time to eat, Doc. I I'll see you later. Good, well, where are you going, Ch Chess? Uh Oh, my, that boy. What in the world's the matter with him? Uh, Mr. Dillon? Uh, oh, hello, Chester. Well, I see you're busy. Yeah, I got to get these forms filled out for today's mail. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Uh, Mr. Dillon, you been down to Reed's Creek lately? What? Uh, Reed's Creek. The, the fish sure are biting down there. It's only about an hour's ride. Uh-huh. And it sure would be a nice day for it. You could go down there and catch a mess of fish for dinner. Chester, what are you talking about? Uh, Reed's Creek. I, I, I just thought it'd be kind of nice if you used to go fishing this afternoon. Down to Reed's Creek there. Uh -huh. You could go. I thought you went fishing this morning. Yes, sir, I did. That's why I thought maybe you could well, go... Well, think with... again. The fish won't be biting in the middle of the day, will they? Oh, no. You, you can't be sure, Mr. Dillon. I knew a fellow one time... Then why don't you get him to go fishing, huh? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Chester. Yes, uh, sir. Why don't you light someplace? You're worse than a horse fly. Yes, sir. I hear they're bringing in some new stallions out to Lem Bridges' place, sir. New stallions out to. Mighty fine pieces of horse flesh to tell me. Some stallions. Make a nice little ride this afternoon to go out there and Chester, see him. Chester. Yes, sir? I'm not going fishing. I'm not going out to Lim Bridges' place. I'm not going any place but to Hayes City, and I'm late right now. What'd you say? I'm going to Hayes City, and that's all. Oh, Hayes? Going... Now, do you think maybe you might stop talking just long enough to take these envelopes to the post office for me? I gotta get going. Oh, oh, yes, sir, I sure can, Mr. Dillon. Yes, sir, yeah, I sure can. Uh, oh, uh... Mr. Dillon? Yes, what is it now? Mr. Dillon, I, I just want you to know... Well, if anything was to come up while you're gone, I sure would do my best to take care of it. Yeah, sure. I, I don't want to worry you none. I'll, I'll handle things. Sure, Chester, I know, I know. <clears throat> hmm? I can I'll say goodbye. All right, Chester, goodbye. I did... Mr. Dillon, I'd, I'd kind of like to shake your hand if it's all seen you. Chester, will you get on down to the post office with those letters, will you please? Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'm going. Bye, Mr. Dillon. in America have a lot in common, and yet they're each one of a kind. Take, for example, Phoenix, Arizona. 
anyone in town will tell you of the city's fantastic growth, and most of them are part of it. One of the big points of pride in Phoenix is the Arizona State Fair, out at the fairgrounds on McDowell Road. With the new Veterans Memorial Coliseum, the facilities are greater than ever before. And those 10 days in November are part of what Phoenix anticipates in the fall. In the spring or summer, when the wind is right, there's the aroma of orange blossoms in the air. And when the wind is wrong, you're reminded that Phoenix is a cow town too. At Central Avenue and Thomas Road, the young crowd gathers at Bob's Big Boy. Housewives frequent the malls of Park Central and Chris Town shopping centers. And all the while, the basin is humbled by Squaw Peak and the Camelback Mountains. But if your hometown is Phoenix, you already know this. We only wanted to remind you, it's still there. See you for a minute. Ah, sure, Doc. Yeah, walk along with me to the stable. I'm on my way to Hayes City. Yes, that's what I wanted to see you about. Uh, did Chester talk you into going there? Talk me? Well, no, Doc. I got government business down there. Why? Well, he's been working at getting you out of town all day. Oh? Uh-huh. Just had his mind set that you'd get out of town. Well, why? Well, I don't know, but, but he was a kitty about it before noon. He wanted her to get you to go for a ride in the country. <laughs> I bet she fixed that in a hurry. Yeah, she sure did. A summer afternoon's ride somehow didn't seem to appeal to her. And then Chester started to work on me. On you? Yes, he thought it'd be nice if you'd spend the afternoon riding around with me in my buggy. <laughs> Even Chester isn't that crazy. You no, know, but something sure eaten him. I just passed him in the alley behind the bank, and he's sure not himself. Now, what do you mean? Well, he's got two guns strapped on him. Two guns. That's right. And he's acting like the life of everybody in town depended on him. So what do you think, Mary? Uh, I don't know, Doc. There's one thing, sure. What's that? I guess it really is important to Chester that I get out of town. Sick, Chester, you could scare a fella half to death sneaking into this bank through the back way like that. I got a reason. I don't know if I didn't know you better, I'd think you'd come in here to rob us. You wearing two guns. Well, you ought to be glad I'm wearing them now. You listen to me, Alvin, and you won't get hurt if you do what I say. What are you talking about? I ain't got much time to do any explaining. I'm just telling you that this bank is about to be held up. Held up? I was talking to the fellas that's going to do the job. Well, why isn't the marshal here then? He had to ride out to Hayes City. You mean you knew the bank was going to be held up and you let the marshal ride out of town? I had to do it, Alvin. I... Look, I come to take care of things. Now, you do like I say. You go right on up front there like nothing was happening, and I'll carry you from back here. I sure you hope you know what you're doing. You don't need to worry none. I got you covered. And I got you covered. Now, drop them guns. Uh, you... Loot. Wait, mister, now. You drop them. real smart to get the marshal out of town. I've seen him ride out. But you should have quit while you was ahead. Oh, I should have had more sense. I should have told him. The milk's out front waiting. You just stand easy till he gets in here, you hear? Because I got this gun right spang in your back. I tried to be so blame smart, doggone I should have known. That's out front. Milt! It's the floor, Chester! Mr. Dillon! You, you... You got him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Only because you jolted his gun hand. Where'd he get you, Chester? In the leg here. Huh? Right there. It, it, it ain't nothing. What about the other one? Milt? Well, he's dead. I caught him on his way in. Mr. Dillon... 
If I was you, I, I, I'd just send me packing. Oh? Yes, sir, I sure would. Oh, it ain't as though I didn't mean well and wasn't trying to work things right. Like getting you out of town because they said they'd shoot Doc or Miss Kitty if, if you was here. Oh, so that's it. Well, I figured you had a reason. Well, yeah, but I just ain't a thinker, Mr. Dillon. Now look what happens when you... When you... But you ain't out of town, are you? How come you ain't? Well, I... I heard that you were marching around wearing two guns. You did? Yeah, so I figured I'd better stick around if I didn't want you to take over my job. Oh... Uh... Oh, Mr. Dillon, I... <laughs> you just rest easy now. I'll go get Doc. Elijah Cuddlestone, an old political character, once gave this argument on why he, and not his younger rival, should be elected senator. Uh, Senex, uh, if you'll uh, pardon the expression, is a Latin word from which senate was derived. Uh, you, that is, the Romans called their senate a senatus. Oh, senex means an old man. So you see, the senate is supposed to be, to, well, I say, it should be a revered council of elders. Uh, men with age and wisdom, that is. Not uh, young upstarts. Yeah, I mean, boys wet behind the ears don't belong. Wisdom that comes with age is needed. I, I mean, that's what the word means. Well, Elijah was right about the original meaning and the use of the word senate. He did omit, however, the fact that the word senile is also a derivative of the Latin senex. So if we wanted to stretch a point, a member of the senate could be considered an old man. The men who created that branch of our government, however, also gave us our Constitution and defined the age for a senator as not less than 30. Well, if 30 is old, Elijah was ancient. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.